I started experimenting with Ardu Pilot recently, working on a client's project. The project I'm working on is a VTOL aircraft, and it had some crashes already. It turns out that the Ardu Pilot software is more complicated than I thought. So I decided to make a simple test platform for the VTOL firmware to test the basic stuff first. It's basically a quad frame made out of wood, and if it crashes it's going to be easier to fix or modify. Ardu Pilot is more complex than the standard Betaflight or INAF firmware. Actually, for Ardu Pilot, we have the software called Mission Planner, which we use to connect with the flight controller, upload the firmware, and manipulate the configurations and parameters of the aircraft. It's also used to display in real time the telemetry data of the flight. We can modify a huge parameter list, and depending on what you're doing, you'll have to modify the default values to make it work with your project. It also depends on the kind of setup you have. Fortunately, Ardu Pilot is very well documented, and it's worth spending a good few hours reading the documentation to understand the basics. There's also an extensive forum where you can find some help. Ardu Pilot is compatible with a good amount of hardware. In this project, I'm using the Pixhawk 4 Mini and the GPS module. This is in the middle lower range of prices. You can also find other flight controllers of more than $1,000 using the best processors and sensors. A bit of history about Ardu Pilot. Ardu Pilot is the pioneer in open source drone software. The project began on Arduino hardware, hence the start of its name with Ardu. Now it's one of the most important drone and autopilot software for UAVs. But it not only works for flying vehicles like multirotors and fixed wing planes, but also with land rovers, boats, and even submarines. Bear in mind that Ardu Pilot is made for autonomous or assisted flight, not a great option for FPV racing. With Ardu Pilot, you can put the drone on the ground and just do a few clicks on a computer, establishing the waypoints or instructions, and the drone should fly and do the entire mission by itself, including takeoff, navigation, and landing. So here I am testing the firmware with almost no modifications done to the parameters. And the results are terrible and frustrating. I crashed the drone several times because the propulsion is too high and very uncontrollable. And after publishing my problem on the Ardu Pilot forum, some gentlemen helped me with some advice on changing some of the parameters. Then I understood the problem and fixed it. I went back to test it and the results were a lot better. But the quad needs more tuning. I used the autotune feature and other modes like loiter mode, land and RTL or return to launch. And as you can see it can maintain its fly and even fight against the wind to maintain its position, heading and altitude by itself. Finally I can put my hands away from the radio control and get a good shot of it in the air. That is loiter mode. I also tested the land mode and RTL, which also makes the aircraft land by itself. Here you can see some images of the onboard camera. I need to tune it so it has better flight characteristics, for instance, reducing vibrations and having better response, making it very locked on loiter flights. I imagine that this also depends on the quality of the GPS I'm using. Of course, I have to test the Ardu Plane firmware with the Joy Trainer Mini. If you don't follow this channel, you need to know that the Joy Trainer Mini is a very simple RC plane made out of foam board that we built in a previous video. It's also featured in a small online course where you can learn how to build it and fly it if you're a beginner. Also, I did a simple iNav setup to fly it with the assistance of the flight controller. I'll leave the relevant links in the description. I'm going to be using the Omnibus F4 Pro. This flight controller is compatible with Ardu Pilot. It has some limitations, but we don't have to worry about that in our case. I'm going to be using an old GPS module that includes a magnetometer. I just need to do the right wiring to connect it to the flight controller 
And then, to flash the Arduino plane firmware to the flight controller, I just go to the Arduino Pilot firmware website and download the latest stable firmware for RC planes and I use the .hex file. Then I can use INAV or Beta Fly Configurator to flash the firmware with it. After that, we can open Mission Planner and connect the board and start doing the configuration and modifying the parameters. As I said in the beginning, Arduino Pilot is very different from the drone racing software like Beta Flight, INAV or Clean Flight. So it is a bit of a learning curve to understand how Arduino Pilot works. So I connected the wires to the flight controller following the wiring diagram. Then I decided to place the GPS at the back where the magnetometer is not interfered by the electromagnetic noise of the wires. And up there, the GPS should have a good reception. Of course, I spent some time setting up the mandatory first-time calibration and some other basic parameters. But this is not a tutorial about Arduino Pilot, so after the basic stuff is ready, it's time to go outside. So I get my beautiful creation ready to fly. I'm very excited because this is the first time I'm going to fly a plane with Arduino Pilot. As you can see, the flight controller is mounted in a small platform. And right there, you can see how the ailerons and other control surfaces move to counteract the movement of the plane. I'm using the stock parameters for the PIDs, so I'm not sure how it's going to behave in this first flight, but I'm going to use the Autotune mode to calibrate it. And that's the takeoff. Right away, I could see that the plane starts to shake in the roll axis. That's because the tuning is wrong and needs to be fixed. For now the plane feels very similar to flying INA firmware, just like I did some time ago, and you can check that video out on the top right corner on your screen. With this onboard camera you can see how severe were these oscillations on the roll axis, so it was time to enter in the altitude mode. Prior to this first flight I didn't read all the instructions in the Ardu pilot documentation about how to use the altitude mode. It basically says that you have to fly in altitude mode for several minutes doing all kinds of rolls and pitch up and down, and you have to do that several times, and only then the algorithm will create a new PID profile with the data collected. The longer you fly in altitude mode, moving the sticks a lot, the more accurate data will be collected, and so the plane will be tuned better. Autotune is not a perfect solution, but it works very well as a starting point, but you can even use it if you're not too picky. I did the rest of the flights with Fly-by-Wire A, and then my favorite, the Loiter mode. This mode makes the plane circle around the point you switch to Loiter in, in a predefined radius that you can change in the parameters. It will maintain the speed and altitude going in circles in the same spot indefinitely. This mode uses the GPS and the altimeter to hold its position. In other words, it's completely autonomous. Now I can simply take my other camera and make these shots. It's very cool how this plane can fly autonomously. The next day I went out to test the plane again, and the day was perfect for flying, there was no wind, and I did the most gentle takeoffs and landings. Of course this flight controller and the firmware helps a lot by controlling the plane and maintaining it very stable. Next time I'm planning to integrate the mission planning and the waypoint navigation, so that will be very interesting. By the way, if you want to see all the videos from this channel without advertising, go to odyssey.com, link also in the description. I'll also be publishing more footage of the flights that you didn't see in this video. If you enjoyed the video and would like to support the channel, well, first consider subscribing and also check the links in the description below where you'll find a list of all the components I was using and if you buy from those affiliate links, then I'll get a commission with no extra cost for you. I appreciate your support whether you are commenting on this video, sharing the video, leaving a like, or buying from the affiliate links. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.